You can see I've already set up my synthetic division. If you want to do it long, I have no problems with that. You'll know you got it right if we get the same answer at the end. Okay, let's give this a go. First step, synthetic division. I just take that leading coefficient and I just write it down. That's all you need to do. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply, add, multiply, add. You ready? Blink and you'll miss it. Okay, multiply, add. <laughs> I told you, you'd <laughs> um, multiply, add, multiply, add, yeah, happy times. Okay, now I've done the division, but remember, I do have to interpret, what does that mean, okay? Here's my quotient down here, so again, I'm, I'm still dividing a cubic by a linear, so I'm going to get a quadratic, which is x squared take away 4x take away 2. What's that number on the end mean? There's a remainder of zero, okay? Hmm. Now, just, I'm gonna let that linger for a second. I'm going to answer F. I'm going to answer F without any reference to substitution. I don't need to make a substitution because the remainder theorem tells me that P of negative one is the remainder when that polynomial is divided by X minus negative one, X plus one. I just did that division. Right? So I know <coughs> what the remainder is. It's zero. So I'm just going to state it by the remainder theorem. Of course, there's no reason why you can't just substitute it in. When you put in negative 1 here, you're going to get negative 1 minus 3 plus 6 minus 2. You're still going to get zero, okay? At least if we do the substitution. Right. Right? Okay. Now, what does this mean though? This is a special case. When the remainder is zero, we no longer just call them quotient or remainder, la, 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 right? Let's rewrite our statement, right? We're saying P of X is equal to <coughs> this times this plus that, plus zero, right? So therefore what I've got is in fact not just a divisor quotient remainder. I don't just have a divisor quotient remainder. I have two factors. There's no thing hanging on the end there, right? I've factorized P of X. Now this is a big deal, right? This is a cubic. We don't know how to factorize cubics. We've never approached that kind of problem before. We've spent so long on quadratics and looked at all these different ways of dealing with quadratics. The reason why we have dodged cubics is because cubics are hard. Quartics are hard. And quintics are impossible. I don't mean that as like a rhetorical flourish. I actually mean that it's been proven. It's a bit crazy. It's been proven that you cannot find analytically the way we've been doing it, like without a computer that just crunches through the numbers. There's no method like this that corresponds to if you've got x to the 5 or 6 or any number higher. So this is a new kind of problem we've never encountered before, and we just nailed it by kind of taking advantage of this guy. Okay. So this is a special case of the remainder theorem. When you get a remainder of 0, you don't just get a divisor, quotient, and remainder. You get factors, okay? So what I would say is, and um, you can write this as your conclusion over here. We have factorized P of X. Because when we divided by the particular divisor I gave you, okay? When we divided by X plus one, Uh, here's the key thing. There was no remainder. When you divide like uh, 50 by 10, the reason there's no remainder is because 10 is a factor of 50, right? So when we divide x plus by x plus 1, there was no remainder. So being that what we found is a case where there isn't a remainder, this special case is no longer called the remainder theorem. It's not about remainders anymore. It's about factors okay so again wow two in one day okay a nice big box and this next result is called the factor theorem it's really kind of like the twin brother of the remainder theorem that i just gave you except for the fact that well it doesn't have remainders in it okay so underline the factor theorem says if you try out this process if you like just stick numbers into your polynomial and then some number that you choose gets you zero it just boop, disappears if P of A, for some number A, is zero, right? Then, X take away A, that's what I divided by, can you see? 
said x take away a is a factor of the polynomial you're after. Okay. So for instance, if you had some weird polynomial, now I'm just making stuff up, so this is not actually, it's not actually going to be the case. But if I have some polynomial like this, okay, I don't know, uh, 3x to the 4 take away 2x squared take away x plus 10, okay? And I looked at this polynomial and I just started plugging numbers into it, right? And I was like, oh, what about p of 2? What happens with that? If by coincidence, right, that ends up being 0, then the factor theorem tells me, hey, there's no remainder because this is supposed to be a remainder. If there's no remainder, then I have a factor, okay? This would tell me that I should divide by x minus 2. I can take this guy, I can do the division, and then when I do this, there'll be no remainder. I'll have two factors, right? That's really powerful. Finding factors is really powerful because then you know, you know where the roots of something is, you can draw it, and that's something we're going to focus on next week.